Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever time you might be watching this video. My name is Pilot Hoy, and welcome to my pre preliminary pre-flight procedures for the Boeing 737. The reason I'm making these videos is because before I was a professional pilot, I always was doing something, uh, pressing buttons to get uh, the, the result. So it was not based on procedures, it was just based on, hmm, if I hit this button and this works, uh, it should be okay. But of course, to add to the joy of the flight simulator community, I would like to give you a little bit insights about how these procedures work from a professional point of view. I would like to note, however, that I am uh, I am a type-rated Boeing 737 professional. I fly it daily, but I am not an instructor. So everything I tell you is pure for recreational use and not for professional use. If you are looking for that, then this is the wrong kind of video. To start with the Boeing in a cold and dark situation. The only thing that is hooked up at the moment is the ground power. The rest of the systems are all uh, off currently. The first thing we do is we do the electrical power up procedure. And I will share you this, uh, this checklist in the, the description and I'll also try to edit it in. The first thing we do is the battery switch guard close. As soon as we do that, we see that the systems are starting. Next step, the standby power switch. Correction, the guard is closed. The alternate flap master switch, guard closed. Windshield wipers are in the park position, so this position. The electric hydraulic pumps, the, 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 uh, these two are off. And then we'll continue with the landing gear lever is down and an external power is available. In this case, the ground power. The blue light is brightly illuminated, which indicates that the ground power is available and suits our needs. So we hit this on switch. Then the electrical power procedure continues if we need an APU. At the moment, we are not going to use the APU yet. So the procedure for now is complete. The next step, in real life, when we enter the aircraft, the first things we do is we look at the paperwork, we check the circuit breakers, the safety equipment, and we're busy with uh, yeah with the ground stuff. But at, in the simulation, we can skip those uh, parts and we continue to the aircraft systems. So one of the first things we do is when we enter the aircraft, we check the oxygen masks, if they supply us oxygen. We, we press this button and we press the 100% button and you can hear the oxygen flowing. We do that for about five seconds. And while we do it, we check the oxygen, crew oxygen meter. You can, uh, as a reminder, you can uh, you can use that if you have 737, hey, it is a coincidence, PSI, you have enough oxygen for three flight crew members. So two pilots and an observer. Next thing we do is we check the oil quantity and we check the parameters if there are no exceedances. And we check the system page for the hydraulics if there's no refill uh, uh, indication at the hydraulic quantity. As soon as we're done with that, we continue our flow and we move to the aft overhead section. So this is the aft overhead section. And the, one of the first things we do is we put the IRSs on the NAV mode which shows us an on the C momentarily and then followed by an align, which means that the IRSs are aligning, they're determining our position. Then we check if the PC light is off, ELT guard is armed. No lights are, uh, are illuminated here. And based on the configuration of the Boeing 737, there can be many lights here, for example, GLS, GPS, etc. We only have a GPS and the light is not illuminated, so the lights extinguished. Dome light and the intercom is for the needs that are suitable. This is the audio selector panel for the observer seat, which we're not going to use. But then we look at the engine indications for the EECs. Those should be on. 
and all the other lights extinguished. Pastor Oxygen card is closed and the button, uh, the light which shows us Pastor Oxygen is extinguished. The landing gear is down, so we also have three greens here. Then we move to the flight recorder test. The guards closed, off button is illuminated, which is correct. And we test number one and number two for the mock airspeed warning. Then we do a stall warning test, number one. And we are too quick with that. Those needs a few minutes to align. I'm by the top of my head, five or eight minutes, I believe, on AC power. So we'll get back to those. Soon as we done that, if you look at the overhead panel, we use flows, which goes like this, to go through the overhead panel so we don't forget anything. So we start at the flight control section here. Cars are closed. Low pressure lights are illuminated, that is correct. Closed, the yaw damper goes to on. The standby hydraulics uh, lights are extinguished. Auto flaps is closed as we already saw in the electrical power up. Then the navigation section, those are all on the normal position. The displays are in on the display switches in the auto and normal position. The, the lights here are illuminated because the engine valves are closed, but not bright, but dim. All the lights here are not are extinguished. Crossfeed is closed and the fuel pumps are off. Then we move to the next section, the electrical section. The, the, the switches here are set to preference. For now, I'll leave them like this. The battery guard is closed. The cap utility in the IFE switches are both on. The standby power off light is extinguished the drive lights are illuminated that's because the engine is not running so the engine is currently not providing the drives with electrical power we put on the the ground power so this light uh, is still uh, illuminated because we are still connected to the ground power the same as the drive lights the generator off bus because the engine generates are currently off the bus they are not running once we did this step, we can go to the engine fire panel. We flick to the left, oh, oh, excuse me, to the left first. With illuminated fault and APU dead in up. And in master question. As you can see, the overheat detected. Then we move back and the parameters are correct. Then we flick to the right side for the actual fire test. As you can see, the engine overheats illuminate, the wheel light illuminates, the fire switch for the AP, the engines and APU illuminate, the bell illuminates and the master caution. And then we check if the scripts which are providing the extinguishing are operative, they, they are. Then we test for the first, fl first flight of the day, the cargo fire system. So we see three lights illuminated, we see the scripts are illuminated and we of course get the bell again. Now we have tested the APU, it is safe to start the APU. So we hit the start button. So we see a low oil pressure light illuminate, which means that the APU is beginning to start up. So soon we'll see a rise in EGT. And as soon as the APU has started, we can put it on the bus. Uh, the APU has a fuel pump, which um, by prolonged use uh, wears quickly. So if we use it for a longer time, we can use a fuel pump to uh, yeah, re relieve the APU for pump load. And as soon as the APU is on the bus, we're going to see it here, but for now we're going to continue our scan. Uh, circuit breaker lights, you can set that as desired. The left over smoke light is off. The equipment and the equipment supply and exhaust are in the normal position, as you can see. Emergency exit light, cart, we put that to on. So the light distinguishes, no smoking is always on. If once we're done with the refueling, in this case we pretend we are, put on the seatbelt sign, wipes are parked, and as you can see the APU uh, is online. So we put the APU on the bus, so the ground power can be removed by the ground staff. We continue our flow again, we put the window heat in the on position, 
and the online solemnite. Propeat that uh, comes later in the flow, same as the wing and engine anti-ice. And the pumps, make sure that the engine pumps are on yet, or are, are on and the electric hydraulic pumps aren't. Then we continue to the next side. The voice recorder is on and most time we do that already way earlier, but I forgot that one. Then we get to the trimmer, we put the trimmer on, check all the lights are extinguished, uh, the temperature in a convenient position, the ram door full open lights are uh, illuminated but not bright, so dim. The recirculation fans are in auto, the packs go in the auto position, we're on the ground so we open the isolation uh, valve. The APU has been running for 2 minutes and if the APU has been running for 2 minutes you can add the APU for the bleed air. As you can see our duct pressure is rising around 30 to between 20 and 30 psi and we get a dual bleed uh, light which warns us if we are using engine bleed that we are not uh, providing um, yeah, how you say it, that we're not blasting our bleed air towards the APU. Then we go to the precession panel, we set our precession uh, flight altitude, we set our land altitude and very important in the auto position which means that the system will automatically close and open the uh, precession valves in order to pressurize or depressurize the aircraft. If it's in the manual position you can use these altitudes and settings so the cabin altitude and the flight altitude. So you look at which altitude are you and which is which you need to set. We continue to the other side for the lights, all the lights in this case, so the retractable and the fixed landing lights are off, the runway turn-offs are off, taxi light off, start switches are off, engine start, we most time we use in our procedures that we put on the right igniter at our base and the left at our departure airport, at our uh, destination, when, once we depart again, uh, local lights we can put that to on, as the same as the the position lights, so the, the blue and the red light, the red and, and the correction, correction lights at blue, I mean green, so the red and the green light, and the collision lights off because the engines are off, the wing light off and the wheel well we can put it on for the ground staff. Then we're going to the next session, section, uh, we set up our flight director, and we pretend that I'm the pilot flying for now, so the master uh, is on my side and the uh, slave is at the captain side. We put in the correct barrel um, settings so when we depart we use an engine acceleration height. This is what you put in this section as you can see in green. It's gonna take a long while to turn it so if we pretend it's uh, let's say uh, ah, no, you know what we're gonna set it because normally we set we based on the company procedures um, every con company has a different setting, so for now we pretend it's 400 feet, but of course that's very low, so those values are more between the 800, 1500 or 3000 feet of acceleration height. We can put the flight, or, uh, the flight path factor on, you can put meters on if you prefer, we set the barrel, uh, the local uh, altimeter setting in hectopascals, in this case we'll leave it to 1. Uh, 1000 for 1013 hectopascals, so 1013 hectopascals, which also conveniently is standard for this moment. Uh, do we set a selection on the map? Uh, I prefer a, select, a, a small skill because we will be taxing and departing. So this has been set up. We uh, take a look at the airports. I want the airports on the ND for in case we need to go somewhere. And then we'll continue. We continue again, we did the oxygen test, we put the iPad in place, then we take a look at the screen selectors, they're norm, both in normal position, That's, that is what they should be. We test the indications for the autopilot and the auto throttle and the FMC message, we flick them up, flick them down, they all work. We check if there are any lights, such as the cabin altitude, you see the takeoff or configuration, they're all off. We check the GPWS uh, switches there, all guards are closed and the lights not illuminated. We can set up the lights uh, for our screens. And then according to procedure this is the moment we switch to the FMC. But in order to make it uh, 
a little bit easier for you, we continue first here. So we put the auto brakes in the RTO setting. Auto brake disarm light illuminates and then extinguish again. The N1 and speed ref both go to the auto position. We reset the fuel flow from the previous flight if, if that's the case. And then we check the parameters for the engine and the system page for any exceedances. We did the fire test. We can set up all the, the, the navigation uh, beacons, communication, and we check the step trim is closed. You see a lock fill here because the door is open at this moment. This is the first part of the pre-flight uh, preliminary and the pre-flight uh, procedure. Now we're going to continue with the FMC. The FMC is our uh, flight management computer which helps us with the routing, with the performance and a lot more. I'm going to show you how to basic set it up. I'm going to clear the messages for now because it says enter IRS position, which we are going to do. Navigation out of date, you can disregard because I am not updating the IRAC anymore. So I'm not uh, yeah, playing a lot of simulation uh, at the moment. So we start with the FMC. We start at the IDENT page and the IDENT page shows us that we are a 737-800 model. That our navigation uh, <laughs> data is, is out of uh, bounds, it's too old. So, but you can disregard this now. In real life, you of course can't. The engine rating is 26k. And our, we're going to set up our current position. So we are at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. Identifier Echo Hotel off the mic. Put that in the reference airport. Then we see the set the IRS position. Go to the next page. We take the left or the right GPS. Previous page. Set the IRS position. We paste it, so if you press it you copy it, and if you paste it again it is copied. And now the iris have been aligned and you see that our uh, PFD is, uh, yeah, is working actually, is set up. The next step in our setup is the routing. To, make, uh, to, to enter the routing we go to the departure and arrival page, we enter, we enter departure Amsterdam. For th this example, we're going to choose runway 24, so we click 24, and we're going to use the Falco 3 Shara departure, the SID, standard instrument departure. We execute it, and on our ND, it shows the runway, and it also shows the SID. And we go back to departure and arrival again, we pick Rotterdam, in this case, because it's a very short flight, uh, but uh, normally we, you would go to the routing page now, go to the second page, and you can enter the route towards Rotterdam. I already entered some some things, so we go to the arrival, departure arrival page, arrival at Rotterdam airport, pick the Islet Zulu 24, find the Maasels transition. I'm not going to uh, select a star at this moment, and I'll show you in a second why. Go to the routing Go to legs page, I mean, and in the legs page you can see that the route is there. To check if you enter the route, you can go to the ND and set it in the plan mode. And by using the step button, which displays now on the legs page, you can step to through the route. And you can see that the route takes us to the arrival segment for the ILS at Rotterdam Airport. So what we do next is we entered the routing, the routing is complete, there are no route discontinuities, so the route is a continuous route, is we're going to set up the performance. For this example we are going to use standard numbers, because in, uh, in real life we use uh, tools to calculate performance or you can use the QRH or other approved source. For now we're going to assume that our airplane is 60 tons zero fuel weight. We have a reserve of 1.8 for this example. Cost index we use 10. Our cruise altitude is going to be, let's say, 6,000 feet for this short flight. And then you can enter cruise winds, uh, I, the ISA deviation, temperatures, etc. These are all in a flight plan. 
for now I'm not going to show that because I'm focusing purely on uh, on how to set it up. We execute it. We go to the N1 limit page, and uh, this is an interesting part because in order to save our engines, we normally we don't take off using full thrust, which means is we tell the engines uh, that there is a limit up to what point they can set the temperature by using a specific N1 value. This is also something we calculate, uh, so we do not put random numbers in here. But for the sake of this demo, we are taking off from runway 24 Schiphol. So let's take a small D rate. So let's say 35 degrees with an actual temperature of 15 degrees slash 15. And we, you can also pick the option in this aircraft to derate it even further. But currently it's a 26k, but you can derate it even towards 24 or 22k. For now I'm not going to do that. You can select a climb mode. For now I'm picking the full climb instead of the reduce climb. Go to the takeoff page. And it's going to be a flaps 5 takeoff in this case with an CG about 20, which gives us a trim of 5.75. And I'm going to use the QRA speeds because I'm assuming that you guys don't have the proper tools to calculate the performance. And it shows it's based on Roy 24, gross weight 69.1, driver runway with a selected temperature of plus 35 degrees, an actual temperature of 1000, of a correction, 15 degrees. Then we can fill in the Actuation height and the engine out actuation height. I'm used to most of the time using 1500, but these are company procedures, so, and that's also what we set in our PFD by using the, the power switch. But as I said, this is going to take a long time, so I'm just gonna leave it for now like this. But this is when you set it to now, you know, we're gonna set for the sake of the video gonna put it to 1500 and what it's going to do is once we approach that altitude and we are flying an LNAV FINAV departure which we can tell a little bit more about later on it helps us to select the correct uh, setting for the auto throttle and it tells, uh, it tells the plane actually that it's uh, at the acceleration height so at the altitude at which we're going to uh, retract the flaps and go towards uh, a minimum speed of s the flaps up maneuver speed but as you can see it's taking a long while so I'm gonna skip this and do this later in the video once we have set up all these indications the pilot flying will take the takeoff page so if you press root and then takeoff it's only two clicks and the pilot monitoring will use the legs page F and for now this part of the first officer in this case pilot flying part is complete the captain's part, the captain uh, sets up the MCP. So it sets the V2, which is in this case V2 of 150 knots in the IS Mach. Outsports 1, VNAV, LNAV, the runway heading, and the initial cleared altitude. And besides that, yeah, there are also more options available, for example, a heading select departure or another one. Or for example, with, with uh, level change or manual accelerating. Not going to show that for now. The captain's flow is also important. The captain checks his side. The captain checks all the flight controls if they are in the, cor in the correct positions. And the captain does a light check. For now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to skip those parts because it's going to take a long uh, it's going to take uh, quite a while. So for now, basically the setup until the the engine start is done. So once we are cleared for an engine start, we mean of course from the cockpit we talk to the ground, and the ground tells us that all checks are being complete and all the bypass pin has been installed. Before we do that, we put on the fuel pumps. Depending on the fuel we have, so now we put on all the pumps because there is more than 453 in the center tank if there's less we do not put on the center pumps we put on the electric hydraulic pumps the engine 
electric hydraulic pumps so, so b b is always safe to put on uh, but in order to, to switch on pump a the pin needs to be installed if you are getting a pushback always verify if you do something so we put on the the switches it shows us a pressure and it's also could be found here then we set the lower view on the engine page and we're going to pretend that we got startup permission to start engine number or uh, number two and number one so the, f the thing we do first is we shut down the packs and this is of course based on all checklists that are complete so the before engine start so now we're done with all the setup we first do the before start checklist and the before start checklist has the following items the flight tech door close and locked fuel we say the amount of fuel we have and which pumps are on the passenger sign is on the windows locked the mcp mcp is v2150 heading of zero uh zero no, correction we're going to take off the two four so not to see so this is going to be something like two three eight i believe two three eight with the initial client of six thousand also on elnaf and finaf is also on the take speeds v1 140 v rotate 142 and v2 150 the cdo pre-flight is complete the rudder and aileron trim is free and zero taxi and takeoff briefing uh, for now complete and the anti-collision is to go I'm not going to include the taxi and takeoff briefing in this video because I'm purely focusing on how to set up the plane. So the check is complete. We ask ATC for startup. Startup is approved, so we put on the anti-collision light. So the check is complete. We switch off the packs and we are clear to start engine number two. We put engine number two in the ground position. The start valve opens and we start a timer. And as you can see, first the N2 is rising. That's because of the bleed air from the APU. And as soon as this value uh, hits 25%, we will add the fuel. So we put the engine start lever to idle. And you can see now that the N1 is rising, the EGT is rising. Oil pressure is also there, fuel flows there. And we have it, the engine number two has started now, so we say starter cutout, which means it is running. And to monitor the parameters, if you look at the N1, it's about 20, the EGT around uh, 400, and the N2 around s almost 60. So what we use is uh, we always say 20 40 60 to, re to remind if the parents are good so if engine start out it's time to start the number one engine we do the same start a timer for the max motoring and as soon as the n2 hits 25 percent we'll add the fuel because that's basically what you're doing by putting the the engine start a lever to the idle position 25 put all the way to idle and you can see that the n1 is starting to to come up the egt is uh, is also uh, increasing same as the, for the n2 the oil pressure the fuel flow so all the parameters are doing their thing and a starter cut out we have a good start so this is the point where we say we have two good starts you may disconnect and then the pushback driver tells us uh, hold, hold position await for the fissional signal on the left or the right side and they show us that they have the pin we take away the uh, lower du again and we do the flow we put the generates on the engines and we put the probe here to the on position depending on the weather we use a wing and or engine and the ice in this case we pretend not to do so we check the back again the isolation of the auto APU bleed goes off the 
APU goes in the off position, start switches to continuous and we blanked it. blank this space. So now we are ready for pushback with two running engines. And before we do the pushback we call the before taxi checklist. So this confirms that the generators are on, the probe heat is on, the, the anti-ice is off. So in this case we say wing and anti-anti-ice are off. The isolation valve is in the auto position. The recall is checked. Auto rigs, RTO. Uh, I forgot to do the flaps here. So for example, use in this example we use flaps five. So we wait till the flaps are set. This is a, uh, normally a call from the captain in the procedure. So as soon as the flaps are set, we check the flaps. And then the correct call is, it's almost there, as you can see. And it's flaps, five, green light, engine start levers, idle detent. This is the idle detent. And the flight controls. Then we do the flight control check. And our aircraft has the flight control section here to show what all the flight controls are doing. And the ground equipment, then we take a look, it's clear, and then we are ready to ask for taxi. So, congratulations, your aircraft is fully configured at this moment. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give uh, me a thumbs up if you like it. And all comments are of course welcome. And of course all questions. Enjoy your day and enjoy your flight simulator.